ಅಸದಲಿ ಸಲಮತ ಬಲಿ ಸಲ ಸದಾ ಬಲಿ ಸಲ Hadar, Ethiopia is a place of pilgrimage for those of us who study human origins. It's located in the northern Afar region of the country and can be inhospitable at times when temperatures reach 125 degrees. My first trip to Hadar in 1972 was a short exploratory trip, but I was there long enough to realize it was a place I was going to do field work. Hadar had the right kind of geology and was very very rich in animal fossils dating to about 3 million years. And I thought to myself, if we could find hominid fossils in deposits this old, we might just open up a new chapter in human evolution. In 1973, I made my first fossil hominid discovery, a knee joint. The specimen came from a geological stratum dated to nearly 3.4 million years. Detailed study of the functional anatomy of the knee showed beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was from a creature that walked upright, a hominid. Then, in 1974, we returned to Hadar, and in late November, near the end of the field season, I made a discovery that firmly placed Hadar on the map as one of the most significant hominid fossil sites in the world. I remember very clearly it was about noon, and I'd been surveying since just after breakfast. The temperature was approaching 110 degrees, and I hadn't found much except a few teeth of a horse, part of the skull of an extinct pig, some antelope bowlers, and a bit of a monkey jaw. But as I turned to leave, a fossil caught my eye, and I kneeled down for a closer look. It was, in fact, part of an elbow. As I looked further, I saw another bone, and then another. It was truly unbelievable. What I had found was a partial skeleton eroding from the ancient Hadar sediments. I knew immediately it was a hominid, a very old one, and astonishingly complete. That night in camp, we examined the fossils, and in the background, the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, played over and over on a small tape recorder. Because of the petite stature of the skeleton, I suspected right from the start that it was a female. At some point during the evening, the new fossil picked up the nickname Lucy, and she's been known as Lucy ever since. Her discovery did indeed open up a major new window into the study of human origins. Until the discovery of Lucy, there were few hominid fossils dating back to more than 3 million years. So Lucy, at 3.2 million years, now offered many new insights into our ancestral past. Because of her unique anatomy, we dubbed her and the other Hadar fossils a new species, Australopithecus afarensis. Australopithecus means southern ape and Afarensis celebrates the Afar people in the region where Lucy was discovered. In terms of her relationship to other hominid species, we suggested that Afarensis was the last common ancestor to all later branches of human evolution. Although today more complete skeletons and older fossils have been found, Lucy remains the benchmark by which all other human ancestor fossil discoveries are judged. She was the ape that stood up. And as it turned out, the woman who shook up man's family tree all rolled into one spectacular find. In many ways, she's led the research in Ethiopia. She provided the catalyst for other expeditions, which continue to uncover an ever-increasing number of important hominid fossil finds, assuring Ethiopia's critical role in understanding human origins. It seems, no matter what we find, Lucy continues to be an extraordinarily important discovery in human evolutionary studies. Kay Reed is a researcher at the Institute of Human Origins and a professor in the Department of Anthropology at Arizona State University. As a paleoecologist, Reed attempts to reconstruct the environment in which our ancestors lived. Hadar today is a very barren, dusty place. There's very little rainfall. Three million years ago, we know that there were lots and lots of browsing animals, which means there are lots and lots of trees. And these trees probably extended from the ancient Awash River for miles. You could see um, fruit trees, dates and figs and things for monkeys to eat, and more importantly, things for the hominids to eat. Reed works with the local Afar people and collects the remains of many animal fossils found in association with the hominids. The Afar are the guides and the guards, 
and without them, the work at Hadar would be impossible. We work with the local Afar people uh, to show them what kind of fossils that we're looking for. And we do this by taking fossils that we've found previously and showing them, for example, a carnivore tooth. It's long and it's narrow and it slices meat. And we show a lot of different fossils this way so that when we're out looking for fossils, they know when they find something that's important that they can call and say, this is a cat or this is a hippo or whatever it is they find. <laughs> Every type of fossil we find contains valuable information. And knowing what processes affect the preservation of bones between the time of death and the moment of discovery millions of years later provides valuable insights into the world of our ancestors. We do a lot of what's called taphonomy, which is the study of the laws of burial or how animals got into the deposits in the first place. In an average fossil assemblage, bones accumulate over a long period of time, sometimes thousands of years. Specific marks on bones and environmental exposure like weathering or rolling in water provide clues into what might have happened. Many of the fossils found at Hadar show different signs of trauma. Carnivores have chewed many of the bones collected here, and they've also chewed many of the hominid bones. And the fossil record indicates saber-toothed cats, hyenas, and lions were found at Hadar. Now, Lucy didn't have big canines like a baboon. She didn't have stone tools or fire for protection. You have to remember that Lucy stood less than four feet tall and was a biped, so she probably didn't have much defense against the power of these huge carnivores. I think the fact that Lucy had fairly long arms was a benefit that allowed her to climb a tree and get away from these predators. If our early ancestors were sitting on the ground and they saw a hyena loping towards them and there were no trees to climb, um, they certainly would not have survived. There seems to be magic in the fossilized bones of our ancestors that transcends time. And specimens like Lucy become touchstones for discussing human origins.